In this video, I have an outstanding treat for us all. We are on board Jensen Plowright's road bike. That's a Cannondale System 6 to be exact, at arguably the most prestigious criterium race in Australia, that is the Shimano Supercrit. I'm gonna be sharing the race tactics going into this race from Jensen and his teammates. They represent a continental team, Drapak Cannondale Holistic Development, and also what unfolded for the win as we watch Jensen make a sneaky S bend before he rolls into what many deem as one of the most dangerous criterium corners in Australia at around 63 to 62 kilometers per hour. Now, when I say dangerous, I just want to point out, I've seen many crashes myself on this corner, mainly because it's sharp and it's just before the finish. So people are typically fighting for position and also some units, unfortunately, pedal through it. So we've just rolled into the final five laps here and I just wanted to point out some pro cyclist watching you might like to do. Keep your eyes peeled for Kuhn de Court from the Trek Racing Team, Mitch Docker from EF Education First who pulls an enormous turn for the Drapak boys in the final moments. And behind Jensen, there's a handful of other pro cyclists amongst the 107 starters for this 75 minute plus five laps criterion. While we count down these final five laps and watch this race heat up like a 1950s generator, check this thing out. Bob is here today showing the local community the power of this brand new supercharged generator. 107 pieces to it actually. It takes roughly 75 minutes plus five full rotations before an incredible element of speed and power is generated by something deep inside called Jensen. Bob explains to the people they must wait, but when this thing takes off, it will blow their mind. Nice one, Bob. So a few things I'd like to point out. As we roll around and watch some of Australia's best bike riders tackle what will unfortunately be the last Shimano Super Crit. You see residential development is consuming this Criterium track and racing will be no more moving into the future. So this, my friends, is the pinnacle event of an incredible seven years of the Super Crit in action at White Street hosted by the great St Kilda Cycling Club. So firstly, a big thanks to Mark Geary from Ogram Media for providing the GoPro footage of this race. I'll provide links to Ogram's social media handles below. Also, thank you to Jensen for providing me with his data, which you can see on the screen, and also having a phone interview with him prior to me commentating here so I can share these final moments through the lens of Jensen himself. Secondly, not only was this the final Shimano Supercrit, it was the last race for the Drapak Continental Cycling Team. Since registering for their first UCI license in 2006, Drapak Cycling has won seven national and three Oceania titles and over 65 UCI victories across four continents, along with numerous wins at a domestic level in Australia. The team has also had several of its riders progress to the World Tour and they have delivered true on their mantra for helping cyclists not only develop their capabilities as bike riders, but also as human beings. So a massive shout out to Michael Drapak for his commitment and involvement in local cycling in Australia and to all the people that have worked within his organisation. The third thing I wanted to mention as a result of it being the last race for Drapak, there was a bit of a fanfare bringing back some older riders to make up four teams to be exact. Each team is made up of five riders, so Drapak officially had 20 riders with them for this race. And and according to Jensen, the plan was to have a 20-man lead-out of Drapak riders at the end of this Shimano Super Crit, and the idea of sending Jensen out early in the last lap with a rider by the name of Patrick Drapak on his wheel for the win. But it didn't quite turn out that way, as you will see shortly. So a little bit about Jensen before we watch him unleash for the win. Jensen is a pretty young bloke. He's 19 years of age. Prior to 2012, this is where the story gets interesting. So seven years ago, Jensen would have been 12, I think. <laughs> Jensen was playing Aussie rules and basketball. Cycling hadn't even crossed his mind. Then, thanks to a neighbor and his mum, he was convinced to do the great Victorian bike ride. He did this 
on a mountain bike and absolutely throffed for cycling. For Chrissy, he says later that year, he got given his first ever road bike, which was a Fuji newest 2.0, worth a few hundred bucks, as it should be with three chain rings on the front. And this road bike actually ended up taking Jensen all the way to C grade in the local criteriums at Hawthorne. I'm not actually even sure how he rode a crit on it, let alone tackling a nasty steep crit incline at the Hawthorne Criteriums, but it was certainly a sign for the future for Jensen. I asked Jensen how he would describe himself as a rider. He said, I am a diesel with a turbo. (laughs) I wouldn't mind that combination myself. So in this second last lap here, you're going to see some major hustling and bustling with a blue team called Bridge Lane looking to come up the front. In fact, Jensen will be riding for Bridge Lane next year. While Drapak plan to have all 20 riders leading the charge at the end here, let's not forget that there's many other teams with similar plans. Now, in the second last lap, there is a moment of swarming where everyone is trying to get up the front. As you would expect, many teams are here to take out line honours. It was in this moment where Patrick, who was sitting on Jensen's wheel, you can't unfortunately see it because there's no rear GoPro, but he was engulfed by too many riders to be able to reposition behind Jensen's wheel. However, let's watch Jensen reposition himself here. We'll listen to some of this footage as well. So as the speed ramps up here, literally no one's getting around when you're doing this type of speed. I'm just going to stop talking so we can listen until the final moments. So in this moment, we're about to watch Jensen take this corner at significant speed. Interestingly, he will move slightly to the left here to indicate to a rider attempting to come up on the inside that it's probably not in his best interest. Fair enough, I'd say, as it's common knowledge that attempting to overtake on the inside is a dangerous ploy. So Jensen quickly realigns here before taking the corner at 62 kilometers per hour, just a touch under 40 miles for all my American friends, and then victory is his. So a massive congrats to Jensen. He's got a bright future ahead. And I've said to him, we'll catch up for some future content on this channel in 2012. Now, I know many of my subscribers love a good training tip. So I did ask Jensen, given his rapid development in cycling this year, what has been the most powerful training tip or piece of advice he has personally implemented that has seen significant gains. For him, no doubt it's been his time riding on the track. Jensen rode on the track for a couple of years and he emphasizes that the skills and economy that has taught him as a bike rider are invaluable. So thanks for sharing, Jensen. Anyone looking to take their road cycling to the next level, get on the track. Or don't forget, I've also got a free video training. For people looking to take their performance to the next level, I'll link to that below. Finally, a big shout out to my channel patrons. I've had a few jump on board recently. Really appreciate your support. And I'll catch everyone in the next video.